as the Dodge and IT heads out west. Take a look at the shot clock. You probably won't see it count below 40 the rest of the night. Not if Paul Westhead has any sing in the matter. His Lions would thrive at a five-second clock. The top gun and loyal to Marymount scoring machine is senior Hank Gathers, the nation's leading scorer and rebounder last year. His 33 points per night keeps Loyola over the century mark every time out. UNLV coach Jerry Tarkanian has the most popular act in Las Vegas, and he's added another star. JUCO legend Larry Johnson brings a new dimension to the running rebels, power. His presence makes up for the temporary loss of three front lighters, and the Rebels are faster than ever on the attack. Once the team reunites, it might be Tarkanian's best ever, truly deserving their status as number one. Las Vegas, Nevada. And the shootout, the Lions of Loyola Marymount against the Running Rebels of UNLV. The city that never sleeps. Many call it the entertainment capital of the world. Well, the game notes on this one for Loyola Marymount, as we alluded to in the opening. NCAA record, they set that last year, 112 and a half points a game. The last win for them, 1973, against UNLV, as uh, the Runner Rebels lead the series 14-4. Won the 1986 preseason in IT. As we take a look at Paul Westhead, the gentleman who has put this unit together. And when I say put them together, uh, it is a different philosophy because some coaches will say, uh -uh, I'm not going to give up points so I can get the, the tempo going up in a ball game." But boy, that's exactly what they do. Well, this one's now final, so Cal would advance. California winning over Air Force tonight, 70 to 49. I think a lot of coaches are afraid to do what Paul Westhead does because they don't want to be criticized. It doesn't look like their coach, but as we get along in here, Ron, we'll see there's a lot of coaching going on on both sides. Ogman against Gathers, and the tip will go to the Lions of Maramount. Out of bounds is Hunt. will send it over the end line. Already we see Anderson Hunt with his hands all over Fryer. It'll be interesting to see how close they call this ball game. Fryer, he's the three point bomber. Bounces it inside. Gathers. Puts it up along the baseline. Nothing there. And UNLV comes down with a rebound. Ogman clears it. Inside to Jones with the move foul to the score. They purposely put Gathers, as we will see here. Gathers is checking Jones because they don't think Jones is a scoring threat. He only averaged single digits last year. They want to keep Gathers in the ball game, and that's a foul you won't see too often on Gathers. He doesn't really go after anybody on defense. That was a little ticky-tacky foul hitting him on the elbow. Philosophy for Gathers is not to fall out at the score points. Two to nothing. The Rebels lead early on here. Bo Kimball. And the track meet begins. Now, you're not going to see too much set half-court offense in this one. Unless Tark thinks that the tempo is getting out of hand and he will slow it down. Larry Johnson has it blocked as Gathers goes up and sends it over the baseline. Gathers much better in this help-out situation as we see per steamer. I think he's in for a long night. Larry Johnson probably will get 50 on him before he fouls out. Long pass to Johnson. They double on him and a foul. Called against Marabout. And that's Tony Walker picking up his first. Viola, Marymount, known for stealing the basketball. They go after it. They don't want the other team to set up on offense. They take five seconds on their end of the court. 
and we'll see they want the other team to shoot in five seconds also. Tony Walker, his second. He's the junior college transfer guard that uh, gives him quickness. Handers in the starting lineup of the running Reds as Kimball clears the board. 2 2, a little bit of a shaky start, and Logman is going to be called with a personal foul for the Rebels. You can always tell who Jerry Tarkanian wants to stop. He puts Augman on the best inside score, and he puts Anthony, of course, on the outside score. In this case, he's checking Walker, the guard. He's going to put pressure there. Fryer left alone, and he'll fill it all night for there if you leave him alone. He shot 334 three-pointers last year. That was more than four teams in his conference total. Three-pointers. Muscles his way up. Can't get it to go. Jones tries for the rebound, and it's Fryer who retrieves it. You and all be a little bit cold to open this with it. Fryer again, just inside the three-point line. It's going to be two. That's five total for him. Took him four and a half seconds to get the shot. Now they're getting back into their game style. Fryer now two of two from the field as the Lions have jumped out on top, six to two. Joe punched the hoop. In and out, unlucky bounce. Johnson over the back, and the Rebels got a little bit of a break there. Is on the garbage, it's Jones. Once again, they don't want UNLV to set up in that great pressure defense. Most clubs think they have to slow it down against the running Rebels. That really helps their defense. First substitute of the ball game, this is Terrell Lowry. Sophomore out of Oakland, 6'2", 160. A little more of a score than Walker. Walker's known for his assist. Lowry can score a little better. Lob pass comes up. It's Pierce Steamer. They're out of sweep. Out front of the screen on Augman, and Augman is limping just a little bit. That was a pretty good lick as Steamer took him on. Well, that's Steamer's job. He's the trailer on the fast break. Last one to get down. A great outside score. So you have to check Lyola Marymont everywhere on the court with him outside, Kimball and Fryer in the corners. Anthony gets it away. Johnson with his first two as a running rebel. Gathers. You don't give high fives after you score against this ball club. You get back on defense. What's dangerous is when you look down to try to keep your score sheet. <laughs> They've scored four hoops by the time you look back up. The computers have to do that tonight. Anthony left alone. He passes up the shot. We outside. Hurst can't get it to go. Anderson hot with a miss and Fryer. Going to put up the three. That's partially tipped. It's good defense by Hunt. And on the air ball, Rebs with a break. Hunt. First two for Anderson Hunt. They'll score more and a half tonight than North Carolina State did in Richmond in the whole ball game. Stolen by Hunt. Anthony's on the left wing, but he's going to take it all the way. Anthony Hunt, Southwestern High School in Detroit. Stolen. And guess who almost got run over? Oh. Sean Ray Leonard is sitting right down to our right. Don't hurt Sugar Ray before his fight. Roberto Duran's cheering. 10-8. The Rebels lead in this one is stolen. Greg Anthony. He got away with the push. He pushed Terrell Lowry and got the ball. The referee was shielded. Tony Walker with the warm-up off, and he'll come right back in the ball game. Biggest lead to the contest by the Rebels. With Lowry in the ball game, they're not getting the penetration that Walker gave them. He really gets inside, and it opens it up for Kimball in the corner. You know, one of the things that uh, Paul West had told us this afternoon, of all the things that bother him, it is the very physical nature of UNLV. He said, getting a chest on you, getting a hand on you, and throwing us out of our rhythm, out of our lanes where we want to be. They do that. Really a physical defensive ball club something else that they love to do, and that's a trap in the corner, which they just tried. Gathers with the ball away 
three jumper. That jump shot isn't pretty, but it's very effective with the three point shooters all over the court. Gathers now with four points, so let's take a break. Rebs 12 and the Lions 10. With UNLV leading Loyola Marymount 23 to 15, we rejoin the broadcast with just under 12 minutes remaining in the first half here on ESPN Classic. Well, some of the beautiful people on Gucci Road tonight. They sit right down on the floor here at UNLV. That's where uh, Sugar is sitting. Now, if you want to know the lifestyle that uh, Tark has to keep up with here in Las Vegas, take a look at this video. That is, this is the taping of a music video <laughs> with Tark and Wayne Newton. This is from the Alumni Association, which shows that Tark will do most anything to help you raise money for this university and this athletic department. <laughs> and he swore that this outfit is not his. I don't believe him. Vice with the long down court pass tries to get it away. Lots of contact underneath. Guess who's there in the middle of it? Peabody. Kimball. All the way along the baseline. Going to be forced out and a foul to Larry Johnson. Vice will find out you don't give up the basketball against Marymount on a fast break. They'll let you score. They want to run it back down. He tried to pass too much. And down at the other end, they came right back. If they call him that close, Marimont will end up shooting a lot of foul shots. Normally, in the shark tank, you don't get calls like that. Vice comes out as Anderson Hunt will check into the lineup. Bo Kimball, by the way, two points, two rebounds. And this is the first time that he would have been to the line this evening. Anderson Hunt, the starter, 6'1 and a half, 176, a sophomore out of the train. As Kimball knocks that first one down, third point for him. The Southwestern High School preseason rated number two in the United States. Not a bad, not a bad talent down there in Detroit. Kimball knocks them both down. Kimball and the Hank Gathers have played, as you see, a trap in the backcourt. It's going to be stolen. Peabody, that's three on one with a break. And Kimball bring the roll down. 23 to 19. That 10 point margin has now been brought down to four. And Anthony immediately went out and got the basketball after the steal. Jones misses the pass just a little away from him. And now this tempo is more to the liking of the Lions. Tip inside won't go. Fryer dishes it off. All the way is good. John O'Connell, first two for John tonight. The sophomore out of Glenside, Pennsylvania. Other end of the floor, miss on a three-point attempt. Peabody comes down with the ball, and right here, they can tie this ball game or go in front. They get neither. Anderson Hunt on the long carol. As I said, don't give it up in there. Shoot the layup. Here they come back. Won't go stolen. O'Connell will have the easy two. And right now, Larry Johnson's tongue is hanging up. He's not used to this tempo. Two-point ball game again inside. Hunt misses on the short jumper. Here comes Peabody. Puts it up with the left hand and an offensive foul called against Peabody. I don't know about that. We're going to have to take a look. May have been a little body turning on this one. Here's Peabody. Well, we got a little acting job there. And uh, as it was, it probably was a charge with a little Academy Award attached to it. Second personal on time, he'll sit down. Lions had a chance to tie it up. About scored you on LB 12 2 over this stretch. And Hunt got caught in the backcourt again. Anthony has to come out and save them. Johnson loses the ball. Anderson Hunt comes back with the errant pass. His jumper won't go. Bang it inside as Bo Kimball tips it away. Lowry. Three of it goes. 
goes Kelly. And that's where they go first. The right corner to Fryer gets the defense spread. And they look for Gathers inside. Simple formula. More coaches should use it. They don't have great talent. Lions back on top by one. Over the back and no call. Steamer came down with the rebound. Terrell Lowry. Tark will get a timeout soon. He doesn't like what he sees right here. The tempo of this game. Larry Johnson against Steamer. Larry Johnson's only touched the ball three times in the last ten minutes. Hoffman misses inside. It's going to be over the back. And Fryer will pick up the foul. All Larry Johnson is doing in this ballgame is getting tired. He's running from one end to the other, and they're not taking advantage of the fact that Steamer is no match for Larry Johnson. But UNLV's guards are caught up in the tempo of this game, and they're not getting the ball where they should to a great score. Yeah, Johnson probably had a decent idea after they played the Russians of what the pace might be like. But... The Russian ball club did not go up and down the floor like these guys. No way. We're in purple here tonight. I think we're seeing two of the best conditioned basketball teams in the United States this early in the season. Well, both coaches said we think we're in good condition, but we got to have game conditions for our style. We can't, you know, duplicate that in practice. Peabody scores, and he'll go to the free throw line. Notice UNLV closed that right corner with Fryer early in the ball game. But now that the action is going up and down, up and down, we see Gathers open inside from Fryer, and he passes off to Peabody for a three-pointer. But now Fryer is open in that right corner. Gathers is open underneath, and this is what Marymont likes to do. Loyola Marymount on top. Hoffman drives to the middle. Can't get it to go down. Oh, what a nice job on that uh, outlet pass. A wide move to the wing. And Steamer was fouled heading to the hoop. It looks like Jones. And they had a... They had a five on three. Anderson Hunt was wide open down at the other end. But eventually, that type of fast break coming down at you. As you can see, watch everyone turn and start up court even per steamer and sooner or later they nail you now if that was Fryer he'd have stayed in the corner for the three-pointer Peabody fills the lane for the layups and they have a very structured fast break everybody on that court has a place to go Chris Jeter is in now because Larry Johnson really is feeling the pace of this ball game first point for steamer on the night Really talking to Anderson Hunt in there uh, about what he's going to do next time now. Player I'm impressed with, Ron, is Pear Steamer from last year. He's toughening up. He boxes out much better on the defensive boards. Lance thought they might have gotten a 10 count there, but uh, they were not successful with it. Steamer are two times on the Swedish national team. Turnaround jumper is good by Jones, his six point. Jones early in the ball game got the ball inside three times. That's the first time that UNLV has the ball inside the paint in the last five minutes. Well, we talked about the running Rebels outscoring. Uh, now it's the Lions' turn at 33-27 uh, right now as they lead in the ball game with just over eight minutes to play until halftime. And there's some pushing going on between Anthony, and this happens a lot. In UNLV ball games, they like to intimidate. They like to put their hands on you. Pear Steamer will pull the trigger on the inbounds pass. Walked into the gym today and turned to his coach, Paul Westhead, and said that in his Swedish accent, Coach, that rim is too low. They brought one of the guys from the physical plant out, put the measuring stick up there, and by gosh, it was about two inches low. He's an outside shooter. <laughs> Kimball deep in the corner. Dribbles it to the middle. Putter not there, but that is going to be off of UNLV. 7.46 left until halftime. Lions by six. Get a little physical inside. Well, they brought Jeter back into the ball game. He's a tough guy. He can't score, but uh, he'll bang you around in there. 
and we're going to see uh, Gathers and Jeter really were talking at the end of that time, at the start of the timeout. Jeter on the bench now, but uh, they need somebody to really, with Ackles, Scurry, and Butler out of that lineup, they need a rebounder in there that's tough. Outlet pass, Gathers. was an all-time high of seven seconds holding that ball. 36 to 27. UNLV was up by 10. They're now down by nine. Johnson, that's his fourth point. And there's what we're talking about. Get the ball. He, Paris Steamer cannot stop Johnson. That timeout, the Tark probably told him. Peabody feeds back into the middle. That is blocked and back down on the floor. And here come the Rebels as Ogman is a man who got it. Anderson Hunt fouled on the way to the hoop. And you notice the officials running in between, like well, after every play. And, of course, Ogman and Steamer have had something going for And as I said, that probably helped Steamer. The fact that now he took a swipe at Hunt going for the layup. Normally, he had let him take that. His job is to get the ball out of the net when they score. It's Gather's job to rebound a missed shot. Steamer's job is to get the ball, get it up court. As we said, it's a very structured fast break. It looks like it's wild mayhem out there, but there's some thinking going with that wildness. First time at Hunt's been to the line tonight, he misses. Eight points for him on the night. 0 for 3 from three-point range. And in fact, 40% from the floor. Last year, Cal Irvine gave UNLV the most trouble in their conference, and they run and shoot exactly like Aaron. Go back to Lowry as they play pitch. Breyer passes up the three-pointer, rattles the 12-footer down. That's 10 points for him. First player in double figures tonight. UNLV helps out so well. <laughs> It's a curse against this ball club because as soon as you start helping out on a penetrator, it leaves a three-point shooter open. And normally, it's great help defense on the part of the Rebels. Tonight, everybody's got to do their own job, and you got to check those three-point shooters. You know, for people that might have missed the opening of the telecast tonight, you might talk a little bit again about the three guys that are missing off this UNLV team. Well, George Ackles... He has a broken wrist. A great 6'10 senior that probably will be redshirted. And they have Moses Scurry, a heck of an inside banger. I think he'll fit in real well between Johnson and Ogman. He's out academically, may get in for the next ball game. And of course, <laughs> he's gonna bite his tug off there. But a great foul shooter. Shot 77% last year for Odessa Junior College when he was junior college player of the year. And as we said, David Butler is the other one. He was an All-American Juco player the year before coming in. So UNLV has lost a lot. He also is academic. He'll be back December 17th. Six-point ball game. Kimball with a nice move in and out. Unlucky on the 18-footer. The outlet pass, and I think most of folks to it, uh, that guy that plays the tuba up there. <laughs> I'd be a little nervous if I was Jerry Tarkanian simply because Bo Kimball, the great Philadelphia high school player from Dobbins, is really cold. And if he starts putting the ball in, then they really have trouble. Bo's got six points right now. Interestingly enough, Gathers and Kimball have played together since the ninth grade. The flyer cans it from just the inside the line. Did they give him three? Two, I think. That's not like it. He shot last year more three-pointers than two-pointers. Vice back at the ball game feeds it inside to Jones and little maybe jump hook gets it to go down for his eighth point. Nice defense by Hunt. Fryer is right there, takes it to the hoop, and they're going to say it stays for the Lions. And I think UNLV got away with a little hitting on the elbow before that. Jones is also wounded. He's going to go to the bench. When have you seen a UNLV team kind of holding on to their trunks, sucking wind like this? And uh, Merrimont really in shape. Well, uh, Tark said today that they had run harder 
in this preseason than at any time since he's been here. He said, I know that we are in good shape. They'd practice for three hours and then run suicide for another 20 minutes. He said he's never done that with a ball club. What is this conversation here? I think it's over. Oh. We understand as uh, Booker Turner is talking to both coaches at midcourt. We have just been told there has been a bomb threat. And there is going to be a four-minute delay in this ball game. I hope well, that's about the only thing that can, can slow these two ball clubs down. So with five minutes and 41 seconds left, we're going to take a break. As a bomb threat has been experienced here in Las Vegas, it's the Lions 40 and the Rebels 34. We'll be right back. Well, there's the score, 40 to 34. Loyola Marymount is leading with 541 left until halftime. And in a very serious situation, both coaches were called to midcourt. They were huddled with the officials, and what they were being told was there had, in fact, been a bomb threat here at this arena in Las Vegas. And right now, uh, Tark doesn't care about a bomb. He is not real excited about his defense. If I weren't screens, I didn't think we could be this bad defensively. he was very succinctly put and one thing people need to understand and, and we came on in the top of this telecast tonight talking about the, the roaring offenses of both of these ball clubs tis true but one thing you need to understand and you know it if you are a, an avid basketball fan UNLV starts with defense first then offense well they do and that's what's bothering Tark so much everybody got caught up in this offensive as we see here Viola is shooting 50% UNLV 47, but Merrimont has the game going up and down like they want it. UNLV, and that's why Paul Westhead said, I have to even speed it up more against them. What is... <laughs> Our cameramen are trying to help with the bomb threat, and I see a package up there, so I hope someone is uh, looking into that. Because there was a four-minute search. Who is the layoff going to hurt the most? I think it's really going to hurt Merrimont. Why? They had the momentum going. Tark had just called a timeout, and it didn't help out that much. Uh, I saw the Rebels with their tongues out a little bit, and I thought Merrimont was really had things their way. And I think this four-minute timeout is going to hurt them. And one thing that didn't help, it just happened right now. Tony Walker picked up his third foul. That'll really hurt because he's doing a great job of breaking down UNLV's defense. And the Rebel defense starts with Greg Anthony on the point guard. If they can control the point guard, they can control your offense. But Walker is really getting by Greg Anthony. Hockman now with eight points of the night. 40 to 36 back to a four-point game. Reps jumped out to a 10-point margin. Then the Lions not only closed the gap, but have taken it out by nine. It's been cut back to four. And there's the Rebel defense. They're really going after him. Gathers pulls up and hands it from eight. But when they do that, they leave one-on-one -on -one basketball open for Kimball and Gathers. And that time, Gathers went one-on-one -on -one and scored on Jeter. Ogman moving toward the hoop, knocks him down. Ogman said, I'm an Olympic player. I have to take over and do some more offensively tonight. Steamer, good handles. Any further out, he'd have to purchase a ticket. Inside gathers, and that, he doesn't mind being called a garbage man. He said, yeah, I know where uh, my position is under there. Ten points for him. But you can see how that left gathers one-on-one -on -one inside the rebound. Ogman has just been called for the foul. Booker Turner says you got him with a hip with your backside as he went by. You know, I, was, I was talking to the three officials tonight. They said, how would you like to open up with this ball game? Stacy Ogman. It's three fouls on him. Now watch what happens. Watch him. He's just going to butt him out of the way. There you go. 
Good call. Good call. He he had control of his body, and I think he's turned his hip and committed the foul. And that's big. There's a big defensive player for the ball game. And UNLV is having trouble defensively. Their best player is on the bench. Larry Johnson checks back into the lineup. 44-38. This one gathered, hand in his face, and an out won't go. A little unlucky on the roll. You know, gathers not a lot of talk. He just lets what happened on the court do the speaking, doesn't it? Well, he had a big smile on his face. He thinks he can take Jimmy Jones to the hoop. There's a good matchup right there. Johnson, you see the quick double on him. Turnaround jumper is there. That's still only eight points for him. And he's only had the ball about five times. Three of it goes, not there. Jones with the board. Good shooter. Not so good on defense. Pure shooter on offense. Rebels are down by one. Ball is loose. Johnson comes up with a vice of the two-on-one break. Back to Johnson. Maybe one pass too many. Vice is two for two in the too many pass department. Shoot the basketball against Youngster trying to be unselfish. As Hunt has just picked up the foul. That's going to be the first one on him. Coming up at a halftime. Dodge at IT scores. It also highlights. And who's number one? They'll have opinions from around the country. Is I'll tell you what, the way Tark is, and then looking at this ball club and the way they played in this first half of play, I don't think he'd vote for himself right now. Well, without those three inside players, I wouldn't vote for him before the ball game either. Syracuse without a point guard, great inside. They have a little mending to do. Michigan, Ramil Robinson, a little backup with a man named Tally from Cooley High School. Great ball club. Georgetown, great inside. So there's some great ball clubs around the United States. Johnson. Young in the corner. And as Mike mentioned, he is a really good pure shooter. Johnson going to take it to the hoop, but he's seen a lot of people after him. Spin move is there. Mr. Johnson has to get a little selfish now and shoot the basketball. May have to. You're exactly right. Born in Tyler, Texas. Grew up in Dallas. Of course, was going to go to SMU. Wears his trunks like Archie Moore. <laughs> the famous fighter of past years. Tell you, he is an extremely fine-looking physical specimen. It's Bo Kimball. Nice spin move working into the paint. Eight points now for Bo. See UNLV out cutting off the outlet passes, and they're leaving that middle open for the one-on-one -on -one move. One-point game. Lions on top. Again, it's Johnson. Pressure on him, and now this is what everybody expected to see happen from him. He's got 12 points. Make it 14. <laughs> but it's Merrimont's tempo again. Up, down, up, down. But at least UNLV's getting it to a very, very tired Larry Johnson. Look at him there. A little trap in the backcourt doesn't work as Johnson dishes it off to Hunt. And he is a tired young fella. Johnson has to get underneath yeah. one more time and then out of the ball game. He can hardly stand up. <laughs> Anthony, all the way to the hoop, can't get it to go, but he'll go to the free throw line. It's Chris Knight picking up the foul. They're getting some quality minutes from Chris Knight. All Marymont needs is for its subs to give them two or three minutes. Now Hank Gathers comes back in there, and he's fresh. Jones and Johnson are really tired, so there's a big advantage for Marymont. Johnson goes out of the ball game. Tark's looking at him saying, hey, you're not going to spend too long here. You're scoring. one in the second half it's NBA tempo we know where the NBA games are won. Well, Anthony had a chance to break the tie Jones gets the rebound and it'll stay with the Rebels a lot 
college game day 1130 Eastern time started off right if you want to know what is coming about as far as college football Bob Bino and the gang Bino is my hero is that right <laughs> Pittsburgh Jones takes it strong and he's it off the glass good for two and Jones is not a great one on one player but he can score against this player. This is not their thing. This is what they do best, right there. Jones now three points of the ball game. As Kimball, good hustle in the middle, can't get it to go. Gathers with the tap, not there, and O'Connell picks up the foul. Once again, Viola had five men in the paint fighting for that rebound. Sooner or later, they get burnt down at the other end, but they make up for it with offensive rebounds. Different philosophy on that offensive board. Most coaches that say you have to send three to the board. And look at the five men, all ready to hit that board. No one back on defense. You see three Rebels under there. Two are ready to take off. But more than not, the Merrimont team will get that rebound with five against three. Chris Jeter to the line. Early in the ballgame they did, but now UNLV is just tired. That's the philosophy that Paul Westhead lives by. Send five rebounders to the board. Don't worry about layups at the other end. Greg Anthony has just picked up his third foul. So Bice will come back in with 106 to play until halftime. You and I'll be 50. Johnson comes back into the lineup. And LMU 48. Well, we've had the seesaw going in this one. I remember last year when I had Viola. I was calling them Marymount, and that was a girls' school in Michigan, they told me. So I think I better. They, they don't look like a girls' school tonight. Johnson gets it off to Jones. Young can't get the short baseline jumper to go. That's not Young's shot going under there. He should be out in the corner. LMU can tie it on this trip, and they do. Constant, relentless offensive pressure. Five points now for Lowry. Ice with the jumper. He's a little tight. He knocks it hard off at back iron. Lions can break the tie here. We won't do it on that play, but Bill Kimball will go to the free throw line. Now, once again, Barry Johnson goes out of the ball game. He's back in the ball game, fresh, two times down. He doesn't even come close to touching the basketball as Young and Bryce took unfortunate jump shots. They have to get that ball into Larry Johnson, no doubt about it. And that's what Viola does. They make you forget your own offense. They give you opportunities to score that normally you don't have in a regular type basketball game. Here's a young man two years ago, great offensive player. Then he had knee trouble last year, and it'll take him a little while to regain that two years ago form, Bo Kimball. Second foul on Anderson Hunt as we have 26 seconds left until the halftime. Kimball trying to go in to double figures with this free throw here. Peabody checks back into the lineup. Ball is going to be stolen by the Lions, and he won't score. Lowry, seven points for him. And they got Johnson handling the ball. Anthony looks up at the clock, and it looks like the Rebels will go for the one last one. Takes it to the baseline. Inside, gathers, swats it away. Hunt puts up a desperation, and on the follow, it's Jones, just prior to the horn. Just before the buzzer, that shot by Jones was good. And at halftime, it's the Lions of Loyola Marymount. Normally, 
it might be a big basket in a regular basketball game. But we've got about 55 points more to go. So, as you see, nice inside block by Gathers. Here comes the shot right here. Perfect position by Jones, and he will knock it down. So as we head to intermission time, it is the Lions 54 and the Rebels 52. Back here in Las Vegas, one other piece of business we need to get taken care of. The bomb threat, which caused a four-minute delay in the first half of play. Uh, thank goodness it was supposed to have gone off at 10 o'clock local time. 10 o'clock has come and gone, and, uh, and nothing happened. But they... You have to be careful. You have to be safe in a situation like this. And people got up all around the arena, checked underneath their seats. The police and building authorities were going through. I talked to a guy at halftime. He said they went through all the offices. They didn't know what they were looking for, but they couldn't find anything. So obviously it was just that, a bomb threat. There was no bomb in the arena. Here are the individual scores. First of all, for the Lions of uh, LMU in that first half, Fryer with 12, also Lowry with 12. Kimball and Gathers with 10 apiece, and O'Connell off the bench with four. And for UNLV, Larry Johnson with 12, as well as Jones, Ogman with 10, Hunt and Anthony, nine and six, respectively. Just about set to get this one started in the second half. LMU on top by a couple. early two minutes will be very important for LMU. Nice give and go and he knocks it down Jones. He can shoot that. Steamer three pointer was not there. Bo Kimball working well inside and he will get the ball. Gathers went right over Larry Johnson and kept that ball alive. They're doing a great job LMU on that board. You know you you got to like Kimball. He's one of you gave a great description of him at breakfast this morning. Very quiet at times, and you don't realize what he's getting accomplished at both ends of the floor. Anthony on the spin move, not there, has the follow, and he gets it. Pryor, not a great one on one player, but a great shooter. Steamer feeds it back out. One too many passes as that one is stolen off. Off to Anthony. Left-handed jumper in and out. Johnson. 14 points for him now. I look for Greg Anthony to get hot this second half also. Kimball knocks it back to his teammate, and there's an example of what we were talking about. Shot Getting it done. Pryor, that's good for three. You don't give him many opportunities wide open in that right-hand corner. That's his home. W back on top by one. On the left-handed three-pointer, hard off the front iron. Look at Gathers get down the court. He beat Jones and Larry Johnson, but it was a charge call. That's four fouls on Tony Walker. You take a look at it. Walker had everybody open, and he didn't need to penetrate that time. A great call. Let's give credit to these three referees. These two teams are very difficult to referee. Up and down action. I told Booker Turner just before the tip-off tonight, I hope you guys did a lot of off-season work. He said, we did, but it won't matter in this one. Last year, LMU was a much more overplay type team on defense. Larry Johnson, short go, turn go, on go, jump go. Up, will not go. A good block out of the board is Walker's going to lose it out of bounds. Okay, we've just about hit that two minute mark of the second half. If you're Paul Westhead, what have you got to keep on keeping on to, to win this ball game? I think they're right on track to win this ball game. That two minutes was important. And they've come through it rather nicely. Fryer gets the turnover. Oh. Lowry can't get the jumper from the corner. And here come the Rebels. Augman is it knocked away. And that'll stay with UNLV. All right, if you're, if you're Tark, what do you have to do? Well, right now, I'd concentrate on picking up that fifth foul on Walker. Because uh, Tony Walker has four fouls. Paul Westhead's taken a big chance with his penetrating point guard out there with four fouls. Anthony bangs inside and knocks down the short jumper. 
10 points for him now. And I think Anthony's going to have a big second half. He looks, he's looking to score much more now. One point lead by UNLV. And here's something you don't see very often. UNLV has gone to a zone defense. They haven't practiced it much in the preseason. But that's how concerned they are with LMU. Three-point attempt not there. Steamer with the rebound. Fryer will try another one. Rattles down three. And he's the zone buster. You sit in a zone against that young man, you've got problems. 18 points for him. ULLV has to do that. Look into Larry Johnson. Gathers. This is Johnson. Lost the handle for a moment. charge <laughs> interesting I think Kimball swung at the ball you and I saw that Ron but he must have had all ball as he floated through the air and picked up the charge our apologies to Bo <laughs> <laughs> tie ball game at 62 with 1614 or 1640 as long as it's not on Tony Walker that would be a big loss but they're going they feel Paul Westhead, this is a crucial point in this ballgame. And the zone is still on by the Rebels. Taking a chance. Watch Fryer. Going to stay right where it is. Well, now Anderson Hunt's going to have to be careful. With the three fouls in him and still lots of time left in the second half. And the Rebels not very deep at that guard position. That would hurt them if he picked up number four. Fryer. Good heavens, that's 23. Johnson rips it down. Great move. And you notice the Lions do not give up the easy layup like they did in past years. You'll see great defense. And Augman really had to work. And as you see, there's five LMU defenders back there against the fast break. In past years, you wouldn't have seen that. Good sign for them. Augman rattles down his 13th point. He's perfect from the line tonight, 5-5. Five and five. They hope to do with the zone, I'm sure Tark is thinking, is slow up the LMU offense, not to stop them so much, as they call a timeout, Larry Johnson thinking. Larry Johnson was trapped on the baseline to using a timeout, 65-54 UNLV. Let's update you in this first round of the Dodge NIT. North Carolina State went over, over Richmond. LSU by 11 over Southern Mississippi. Kansas, huge over UAB. Look at DePaul over Ohio State. That one, a route. And California wins big over the Air Force. Now, here's the schedule for tomorrow. First round action, North Carolina a and versus St. John's. Houston and Wichita State. As we go back to live action. Lou Harvey comes back for St. John's in that ball game tomorrow. Young loses the ball out of bounds, and the expression on Tark's face said it all. That's the score in our game, 65-64. But the Lions have a chance to come back and take the lead again. The Rebels, when they break a zone press, they use Hunt and Larry Johnson, and Anthony runs up to the corner. But he's their best ball handler, and they're having trouble with LMU's zone press. Stever, three-pointer, misses that one badly, almost didn't draw iron. Yeah, he was off balance. Not a great shot when they had the Rebels in that zone. But they are slowing up LMU a lot with that zone defense. Johnson has it stripped away by Stever, almost loses it out of bounds. They take it back inside, and they'll have to come back out on top. You told me today in the car coming over here, that's good for three. Hunt 
now with 12. You told me today, coming over in the car, you looked for this game to be in the 90s. You didn't think it was going to be one of those 130 to 129 ball games. Why? Because I thought Tark would come up with something that would really try to slow up Loyola, and he has. He's gone to his zone. He's admitting that the man cannot stop him, so now he wants to slow him up from shooting with that zone. Steamer comes down with the board. Four-point game. UNLV on top. Kimball misses. Johnson and Steamer fighting for the rebound. Let's see how many passes LMU has to take against the zone and how slow they get their shot off. Three passes. Rebels led by 10 in the first half. Four, five, six, seven. Kimball three-point attempt, not there. And Tark has come up with something to slow down LMU. Now, he's conceding a runaway. He thought he could blow this ball club out, outscore them. Now he says, let's make it a ball game. We, we're in it. It's going to be a life and death situation. Three point field goals, both very low tonight 28 and 27 percent, respectively. Hunt, Anthony, I beg your pardon, and he bounces it off his foot after, after getting the steal. Right here in front of us, Bo Kimball is turning around talking to Booker Turner, saying, Hunt is holding on to my jersey. And he is. He's got a hand right in the middle going down court that time. Here comes the Rebel crowd. But he can't get a zone fired up. They're used to that rebel pressure defense. Now the zone has to sit there and look underneath. Well, gathers and Hunt, and Hunt has just pushed it. Hunt could be gone. And then inside, there was another conversation as players are being separated all over the floor. And Kimball and Gathers, they're from Philly. You don't push those. Look at Gathers. He got pushed. This is going to help UNLV. Defensively, they're going to get into the ball game. What Gathers is saying to Booker Turner is, he pushed me, he shot me, and, and he did. Hunt got away with one. Yes. But that'll get the crowd into the ball game. Give you a little history on what happened in the first half. UNLV went up by 10. Then the Lions came back, not only tied the game, they took a nine-point lead of their own, leading by two at halftime. And our situation now was UNLV 70 and Loyola Marymount 64. Both teams had their individual huddles, get themselves all fired up. I'm not so sure if I were if I were the officials, if I wouldn't call a timeout right now. Well, make them sit down and cool off for a second. We're about a fraction away from a bomb going off on the floor. They push Steamer from out of bounds. The fans, and he's complaining about it, that he didn't have a chance to throw the ball in. I think it would get explosive, Ron, if we had UNLV really going after him in that man-to-man. -man. But sitting back in that zone, I think that'll cool things off. And that's what Tark wants. You know, what I say in defense of the officials tonight, you know when you've got two thoroughbreds on the floor like this, you don't want to take the game out of their hands and, and make it nothing but a free-throw shooting contest. Though so they have let them play for the most part on both ends. They've done a great job in doing that. You're absolutely right. Just over 13 to play in the game. Come up jumper by Anthony, not there. Johnson comes down with the rebound. Young was open at the free-throw line, but he passed up the pass to him, takes it to the hook, and it's stolen by Steamer. Gathers helped out, and look who gets the two down at the other end. The leading scorer and leading rebounder in the nation last year has taken charge of this game. Larry Johnson went one-on-one -on -one against Steamer. Gathered blocked his shot. That's an All-American move, and there's some pushing going on once again. Look at this move. There's how Hank Gathers led the nation in scoring last year. 
Only the second player in NCAA history to lead in both rebounding and scoring. He'll never lead in foul shooting. We know that. And anything outside 10 feet, Jerry West from the Lakers here tonight, and I'm sure he's looking at gathers. Could he be a small forward in the NBA? We'll have to see as we see the ugliest foul shot in the NCAA. He's 0 for 2 from the line tonight. Four-point game, UNLV on top. for three not there gathered boy you're right he is taking it into his own hands Peabody not there steamer who hustles all over the floor I'm very impressed with steamer the yeah. improvement this young man has made in a year offense Greg Anthony great defensive player really lured him into and that's number three on Friar. Here's a club that's come into Rebel Land and they're taking over as far as the pressure goes. They're trying to push UNLV into shooting. better defensively than last year this LNGT. Larry Johnson now with 18. Whistle and a holding foul called against Young. Yesterday at the shoot around Jerry Tarkadian said in case we have to play a zone and they get us in foul trouble, as we see, good call right there. Oh, not me. I didn't draw any blood. <laughs> but he didn't want to play a zone, and he didn't think he was going to play a zone, Jerry Tarkania. He's playing a zone. So a timeout called on the floor. The scoring has slowed down a little bit, but the action has not. 72, UNLV. Loyola Marymount, 66, as we have just under 12 minutes to play. Ron Franklin and Mike Rice back in Las Vegas. This is an interesting stat here. Time of possession. We're talking about average per possession. Nine seconds each in the first half. But look, 12 seconds for the Lions in the second. That, that zone taking its toll a little bit. It sure is. And, they, and they're only shooting 35% in the second half. The steamer gets a layup. They haven't practiced that zone on out-of-bounds plays, UNLV. But the zone is working. It's preventing Mer Liola from shooting quickly. Pass inside, going to be stolen again. Lions can cut it down to two or one. On that shot right there, won't go, but it's Anthony. Hunt. Jump ball has been called as Peabody down on the floor battling for the basketball. And it will go with the Lions. When you're going on a two-on-one fast break, normally you want to turn the defensive man by passing the basketball. Against LMU, you want to take it to the hoop and let your other man rebound. They do a good job of stealing passes. It's goal tending. It went anyway. That last time out, I'm sure they talked about how we're going to get the ball into Hank Gathers inside against this zone. He hasn't touched the ball since they started playing zone. Auburn in and out, has his own ball. That's what you want to do. Take it right to the hole and go one-on-one. -on -one. Don't mess around with pass the ball. Zone defense. Peabody not a threat from the corner there. Look how they're playing Fryer. He is. Jarrell Lowry had food poisoning earlier this week. The double team, and Anthony makes the steal on a foul call on Fryer. At 
That's four on him. Big foul against this zone. Fryer has come out of his corner. They have Peabody in the left corner. Probably their zone offense would function much better if they put Kimball and Fryer in their corners to shoot the ball. They're really the guards, Anthony and Hunt, have an easy time of finding Fryer, and they're having all kinds of trouble. Great move by the Tart going into that zone. Let me ask you, can Loyola Marymount win a national championship with a fast-break style of basketball that they play? I think if they rebounded a little bit better they might be able to they play so different they can put pressure on anybody Johnson along the ah! line rattles it down and they're finding Larry Johnson a little bit more they have to they cannot stop him with pair of steamers 20 points now for Larry Johnson Bo Kimball reversed and fouled by Johnson he'll go to the line now LMU is getting its feet on the ground with their zone offense they never expected the Rebels to play a zone. So it's taken them almost 10 minutes to get on track. Beautiful. Brought the zone to one side. As we see Larry Johnson, a little loafing on that. Four fouls make it three fouls on Larry Johnson. So a timeout on the floor. Rebels by four. Well, as you know full well, you don't just want it with five. It's what the folks coming off the bench can help you do. And tonight, by 15 points, they have outscored UNLV with people coming off the bench. And it just goes to show you, you see Scurry over there, George Ackles, Butler. That's a great bench in street clothes. UNLV gets them back. They will be a number one type team. Without them, I'm afraid not. Kimball now with 15 in the game. Johnson has it knocked away. That was Lowry. who have got a hand in. He got around, puts up an air ball on the three-point attempt, and he is signaling, hey, I got whacked on the arm. <laughs> Wasn't a great shot, whether he was fouled or not. They had gathers down low. Jimmy Jones on him, and they took an ill-advised 18-footer. Three-point game, UNLV on top. We have now gone under 10 minutes to play in this one. Playing Stacy Ogden perfect, backing off him, giving him, inviting him to shoot the jump shot. Larry Johnson, not known as a great 15-footer, so their steamer is backed off him, giving him the outside shot. A lot of homework has gone into defending this UNLV team. Jones tries to get Gathers suspended, and that pass, one too many. Steamer comes up with it again. A little fancy there. Hot. That could be a big three. First three-pointer for a hot of the night, and we have him for 19 points. UNLV's back in their man-to-man. -man. The zone did the job for the first 10 minutes. Now they have that seven-point lead. They're going to go after him a little bit. Here are those three guys that you were talking about not able to play. They were the starting front line for UNLV last year. A lot of talent on that bench. Fryer, the trap on him in the corner, back to Gathers, and he knocks it down. And he went around young like he wasn't there. Three of them goes. Two in a row by Hunt. And that's Hunt that played against the Russians and scored a lot of points last week. He's 50% from three-point land, three of six tonight. Try to make it a three-point play. Good foul. Stacy Augman, not the best foul shooter in the world. And that was uh, make him earn the two from the foul line. Stacy didn't like that foul. A little too deliberate, but it was a good foul. Good smart move. Better get used to it. 
He's going to get those those kind all year. Gathers is telling Terrell Lowry, don't be intimidated. And he's now going head to head with the whole ULV front line. But he's going to make sure that Mr. Lowry hangs in there. Very important in this ball game for LMU to be as physical as the Rebels. Here are your field goal percentages in the second half. The Lions were shooting 50% at half, and you can see they have dropped off. In fact, that's come up, as you mentioned a moment ago, is around 35 36. It's now up to 41. Now, we'll keep a close eye on that for the next five minutes with UNLV in that man to man defense. They hate to be pushed out of their man to man on their own court. Their bread and butter. They go in that full court press. 10 point lead for UNLV. They led by the same margin back in the first half, and that a foul is going to be called on the line. Offense. And the good man to man pressure, and that's what the Rebels are known for. Summon outs helping out at all times. Put enough pressure on the dribbler, and he won't know where he's going. The head down takes off. Uh, no, defensive man looked like he moved his feet there right at the last. Might have been very close on that. I don't think he was planted. Larry Johnson comes back into the lineup. He's got 20 points on the night. Had to give him a little breather. He got very tired at the end of the first day. If it goes, well, not this time. And look at Gathers. Oh. Top of the gym. A human rebounding machine. This is fire. He's free. It's back. LMU's tempo now. They're going up and down. But UNLV had a better idea. Let's go into the big guy, Larry Johnson. Young knocked it away. It's going to stay. They got very, LMU. very fortunate. Young and Jones that time. Gathers had a sure two-pointer underneath. Steamer's going to come back into the lineup. Let's see. Going to be O'Connell checking back out as they got a short blow for him. And a great substitution that time. O'Connell gave three good minutes to Steamer. He'll come back in there fresh and be able to rebound. Gathers will take Mr. Jones underneath right now. They're going to get Jones for holding. That was a great pass in. They wanted Gathers to go one on one inside. And a great help out by Greg Anthony, but Jones pushed him on the pass. Tark's wearing that towel right now instead of sucking on it. <laughs> they have to get a go within five points in the next two minutes to have a shot at winning this ballgame. Viola. Seven to 78. The Rebels on top. We go under seven to play. Cross court hunt passes up the three pointer. Young up there. That's his shot. It was a good pass out from Larry Johnson. Booker's looking for help. There's a good referee in threesome. The outside official knew Booker didn't see it. Took him off the hook. With a good call, by the way, because it was the Lions out of bounds. Look at the hand on Gathers. Fifth. Walker playing with four fouls. Back to Steamer. Steamer, a great standstill shooter, but can't get it off the move. Fryer going to penetrate. Doesn't do that very often. He's another standstill shooter. That time, took it right up the gut. 23 points for that young man. 87 to 80. When it came crunch time, UNLV went back to their man-to-man. -man. They're not going to lose or win a game of the zone. They want to go man-to-man. -man. Johnson against Steamer. Not there. Bo Kimball on the board. Charging fouls are hurting the Lions. They are not making good decisions coming down on that break. They 
they have Fryer covered in the corner. Oh. So. <laughs> so he fouls out, having scored two points. Tony the junior out of Riverside, California. They're going to miss him. He was fresh. But that was very questionable. Tough game to officiate going up and down. We'll say that. But that was a tough fifth foul on Tony Walker. Another Academy Award performance on defense. Undoubtedly, Walker only has four since obviously he is still on the floor. And Kimball's out. We'll have to check if he's just tired or he's in deep foul trouble. You know, they are showing that last foul against uh, Terrell Lowry. All right. Let's go back and check it. The foul before, which we thought was number five on Walker, Terrell Lowry. Okay, that was his fourth, so we apologize. And that's key, because you'd rather have Walker with four than Lowry. Walker's a key penetrator in this stretch run with the Rebels playing man-to-man -man against the zone. It wouldn't mean as much. And he's got Young on Steamer is penetrating, and the Rebels are playing it perfectly. They're letting him go one-on-one -on -one and shoot the basketball, but he's trying to force the ball to the corners. Not working. A lot of defensive strategy going down right here in the last three minutes. About to go under five minutes to play with the Rebels 89 to 80. Chuck it up. They got the Lions playing straight man-to-man. -man. No help. Can't do that on Larry Johnson. Johnson taking it over both ends on the door and Hunt around Steamer. Looking for a timeout for the Lions. I got a feeling we're going to see one. Ron Franklin and Mike Rice back in the state of Nevada. And all of a sudden, some big punches as the Rebels found an opening. Well, late in the ballgame, shot selection is much more important. The Lions haven't had good shot selection. Larry Johnson rips a rebound, leads to a fast break. Look at Anderson Hunt coming from behind, gets a good steal. That's more like the Rebel defense. This is the very next possession right there. Greg Anthony did the right thing. Take it right to the basket. So with 428 left in the ballgame, 95 Rebels, 80 for the Lions of LMU. Well, Westhead continues to talk it over with the officials. He was not real happy with the last sequence of events, and particularly the offensive foul that was called just a couple of minutes ago. Storyline on this one, Fryer, 23 points, four fouls, 27% from three-point land, and for UNLV Johnson, and I'll tell you what, majority of that has come in the last 15, 18 minutes, right. 14 boards for him. He's kind of taken over, key in the game, the zone defense that Tark switched to, slowed up the Lions, and Larry Johnson getting more involved with the offense. You know, you talked about that, and the fact that, that Larry might be a little bit uptight. Uh, playing, you know, under these circumstances, first time at a real game. All right, now they have just made a change, and we don't have to apologize. Walker had fouled out. We knew we had him for four, so he played for a little bit with five. He got away with one. In and out, can't get it to go inside, and a foul called on Hawkins. So that's that's one of a number of firsts for the year. <laughs> One, one for us. Now, the way the Lions have to get back in this ball game is rebound. They're, the problem is they're not going to rebound UNLV. They're very good on the defensive board late in the ball game, playing man to man. And how you come back is second shots. Hank Gathers is not in the ball game, so you're not going to get many second shots with him on the bench.
13 points for him now. Stolen by Fryer. The Lions got a big mountain to climb right here. They're going to have to get it done in four minutes. See Lowry not penetrating. Steamer, three pointer. That one barely drew iron. To see the Rebels take a little clock out of the ballgame. Set up their offense now. Make the Lions play good defense. <laughs> Bo Kimball. Tries to reverse it, looking for the foul, and uh, wound up getting neither. Steamer. Johnson looking over his back. Again, and he'll get the two, and he won't go to the free throw line. I think the Lion fans will see a different Bo Kimball as the season goes along. He hasn't had a great ball game. He's capable of much more. I think what he was trying to do there is that ball is going to go to LMU. I think he was just trying to help out the club and come up with it. He he could have taken a better percentage shot, but he tried to take it underneath to draw the foul. That's not the Hank Gathers we watched last year either. 16 points. I think also when you look at his rebounds, that'll give you another indication. He's got to get on the board. Probably one of the best offensive rebounders in the nation. Fire. Three on the way. Not there. Three on one break. Anthony back to Hunt and he misses it. yelling to Anthony get something set but Merrimont will not let them Loyola will keep double teaming keep the pressure on him make him score the Lions will go into their trapping defense to keep the tempo of this game Hudson now with 18 points is Larry Johnson on the steal off the hunt and he'll get it and you know he will oblige it <laughs> Steamer has to go to the penetrate and go all the way in on that. It's garbage time. Bo Kimball picks up the foul. Well, I'll tell you, the mind games and the... The battle between these two clubs started as soon as uh, Loyola Marabout came out of the floor tonight. They walked right into the middle of the of the shooting by the Rebels and said, we want this end of the floor, which they are obliged to do as the visiting team. But UNLV didn't take real sharply to it. And that's when the chess match started right there. We have had a bomb threat in the first half. Tark said that the real bomb was his defense. He said, we're playing none. And now here in the second half, it, just like a good fighter when you find an open, whether you call it the jab, but when they jumped out 15 about four minutes ago, that's what put it away for him. Kimball just dug an elbow right into Larry Johnson's rib cage as Larry Johnson puts Kimball on his back. Both clubs are going to improve as the season goes along. The Lions are tough opener for anybody. The Rebel defense will be there, believe me. No love lost between Larry Johnson and Kimball at this point. Part of the fun of being in the NIT is wondering who you're going to play the second round. They always make up the seeds after the first round game, so we'll have to stay tuned to see who, whom, who plays whom in the second round. And remember, LSU won today. And what a great matchup that would be, especially if Moses Scurry got his eligibility this coming week. This club needs Moses Scurry if they're going to go against LSU back in the New York and I Dodge NIT. I understand that we've just been given the lineup after the shot we'll talk about who is going to go up against who should be interesting NC State will play at DePaul 
Kansas will be at LSU. Wow, great matchup there. And Cal will be here in Las Vegas. And we'll see that Tarkanian man-to-man Friday right here on ESPN against the Cal Bears. I'll tell you what, I got to see some highlights. We were down to Baton Rouge doing the football game last weekend. And the Tigers, there's more than Mr. Jackson down there now that the Twin Towers are in town. Oh, oh the seven-footers, O'Neal. It should be a good one with Kansas. Gathers oh. called for the foul with 67 seconds left in this one. This is the matchup on Friday again. NC State to Paul, Kansas at LSU, and uh, California here to take on UNLV. All of those games at ESPN. I'm on my Western time clock already. Well, Paul Westhead said an interesting thing. He said, we've done all we can do in the gym. It's time we play somebody. We're tired of looking at each other. We need to play a game. He said, however, I have to admit, I'm not terribly excited about having to play these guys in their backyard. I think they were impressive tonight. Oh, I do, too. I, you know, I think uh, UNLV has done what everybody expected them to do. They had their moments of brilliant far, far more in the second half than in that first half of play. But uh, the Lions, they've got several individuals. The young man who's going out right now, Pear Steamer. He is an extremely fine ball player. Kimball, of course, Gathers, of course. Tony Walker, he's got to put things together and learn what it's all about directing this ball club. And if the Tark can get back, chalk this one up to the Tark. That zone defense was That's a right. bit of brilliance. That's right. And if he gets Scurry and Butler back, he may not have to be as brilliant in the future. Well, you talk about pace setters. They've won 30 games, seven seasons in the conference. Gathers inside, can't get it to go. 90% winning rate against the Big West Conference. So it's been the Big Rebel Conference this in the last seven years. But how about the coaches picking Long Beach? That's right, they sure did. Joe Harrington, Seth Greenberg down there. Fryer with a long three-pointer. He's had an off night from that range. He normally shoots better than that. 27 seconds and a foul on the backboard. Chris Knight, the sophomore out of Los Angeles, will pick up the foul. 101 to 89. North Carolina A&T against St. John's tomorrow. That's a 7.30 Eastern start. Houston to Wichita State tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern time. Mr. Herrera. I'll tell you what, Pat Foster, the Southwest Conference was said, or I have read in so many magazines in preseason, saying that the Southwest Conference may be the most improved conference in the country this year. Arkansas bringing back so many of their players. Tommy Penders. Tommy Penders at uh, the University of Texas. I have that Arkansas-Texas game. I look for a great one. I think both teams are going to learn something from this ball game. It'll give them something to go back and practice on. Ten seconds remaining, 101 to 89. UNLV leads. And for a team, the Lions, they scored 140 points five times last year. 130 points eight times. They're not going to do it against the Rebels tonight. NCAA record last year that won 12 and a half. With six seconds left, will not hold. And that is going to do it. With UNLV winning 102 to 91. Your thoughts? I think both clubs show they, and as both clubs meet in half court, there's no love between these two ball clubs. And I think both of them will come out of this better ball clubs. So as you see, uh, Conversations going on, and I'm afraid those are not uh, words of you played a good ball game. That's uh, it's been a it's been a tough night. Neither of these clubs wanted to lose, but the Rebels have taken it. The preseason number one, 102 to 91.